Now, having seen the old concept of partial differentiation, we want to see the best way of defining a total differentiation. Are we together? Now, when you want to get a total differentiation, total total differentiation. So, look at this. If you have, for instance, if you have if you have z to be a function of x only. When I say z is a function of x only, that would simply imply you have z to be maybe 2x cubed plus 2x maybe plus 1. Meaning z is in terms of x only. Are you seeing that? So if z is a function of x only, meaning if you differentiate z with respect to x, you see this is now ordinary derivative. Meaning everything is considered a variable and we have only one variable, isn't it? So if you differentiate z with respect to x, what do you get? 6x squared plus 2. Then again, if you differentiate z partially with respect to x, Meaning only x is considered a variable, but to our advantage, you only have x as a variable. Are you seeing? So if you differentiate z partially with respect to x, only x is a variable, meaning there you get 6x. Only x is a variable, meaning there you get plus. So it means an instance, when you have a single variable, it means the partial derivative is the same as the ordinary derivative, when it is the, a single independent variable, isn't it? So in this case, it implies what? It implies dz over dx is the same as partial z over partial x. So if you make dz the subject of the pool and you take the x the other side, you will see dz is partial z over partial x d dx. Are you seeing that? When there's a single variable, then the ordinary derivative is the same as the partial derivative because we have only one variable. Are you seeing that? Now, what about the case, the other side, what about the case when you have z to be a function of y only. Are you seeing that? So if z is a function of y only, so that you have a case like z is 2y cubed instead of x and 2y maybe plus 1 anything. You can just use this as an example to define, you want to define this concept of total differentiation in a simple manner. Okay? So here, if you differentiate z with respect to y, that is an ordinary derivative, isn't it? So you, there you get 6 y plus 2. Now, what about if you differentiate z partially with respect to y? Only y is 6y squared, isn't it? So, if you differentiate z partially with respect to y, it means only y is a variable, and indeed only y is a variable, yeah, isn't it? You get the same thing, 6 plus 2, because we had a single variable. So, the moment you have a simple independent variable, then it means the partial derivative with respect to that independent variable the partial derivative with respect to that independent value will be the same as the, the ordinary derivative, isn't it? So from here you can see it is clearly seen that dz over dy is the same as partial z over partial y because z is a function of y only. Are you seeing? So from here if you make dz the subject of the formula, you get partial z over partial y d, dy. So from here, this is when z is a function of x only, this is when z is a function of y only, isn't it? So what about the case when z is a function of both x and y? So when z is a function of both x and y, the total differentiation, the total difference, derivative of z is denoted as dz. Total. What does total mean? Total means the sum, isn't it? Meaning dz when x was the only independent variable, you got this. And dz when y is the only independent variable, you got this. Meaning when dz when it was both x and y, total differentiation gives you the sum of both. Are you seeing that? Meaning dz will be both this and that. Are you seeing? So the total derivative dz is partial z with respect to x dx plus partial z partial with respect to y d. Are you seeing that? Are we together? So, this is how to get to do the total differentiation, meaning if you are given z to be a function of x, y, then you, if you want the total differential dz, then you differentiate z partially with respect to x. You differentiate z partially with respect to x, then you remain with the 
Yeah, so you see that. Then plus, you differentiate Z partially with respect to partially with respect to Y, then you remain with the D. Are you seeing that? That is the total differential of Z. So from here, this total differential is going to be very, very important when you want to find the change of small change and the rest of change. Are you seeing that? So the change in something is usually denoted by this Z with this D which, which looks like S. Is what is usually used, used to denote change. We said the D which comes like that is used to denote the, the partial derivatives, isn't it? And that D is for the, for the ordinary. So it means when you want a change in something, a change in something, it is just this, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. So it is this total, the concept of getting a total differential is what is important. That implies that when somebody gives you z to be a function of x, y, t, meaning the total differential of z, you differentiate z partially with respect to x, isn't it? Are you seeing that? Then you remain with d. Then you differentiate z partially with respect to partially with respect to y. Then you remain with d. Then you differentiate z partially with respect to partially with respect to t. Then you remain with d. Are you seeing that? So, from here, from what we now have stated up here, this D is used to denote change. Meaning, if somebody tells you change in Z, change in Z, change in Z, meaning this implies change. Are you seeing that? Are we together? Meaning, if you want change in X, change in X, meaning this D which comes like X. Is defining that statement change in something. Are you seeing? Are we together? If you want change in y, change in y, change in y. So it means when we are looking for change in z, we just do what we call we do, we change the variables. So from here we just do some kind of look here, dz, but now we don't want it to be dz, we want it to be change in x. Meaning, where there is this d, we, we change it with that d, isn't it? Because we want change in z. Meaning, this complete d, anywhere you see it, you substitute it with this, isn't it? Are you seeing? So it means this is going to be change in z is equals to partial z over partial x, because this is not that d, this d is what the d we are interested in, isn't it? That is partial z over partial x, then this d you, you change it, change in x, then it is plus partial z over partial y, this d we change, change in y. Are you seeing that? So it means it is the total differential which will define a change in something. When you want, when you are told that given, given the volume of a cylinder to be this, then if the radius changes with this and the height changes with this, what is the change in volume? Are you seeing that? Such kind of things. Are we together? So from here, you are able to see that change in Z can easily be gotten from the total differential by just substituting the D for J with this D for ordinary. Are you seeing? Are we together? And from here, you can see this is now, this is now what? Change in? This is change in Z, isn't it? And this is change in? Change in X, isn't it? And you can see this is change in? Change in Y. Are you seeing that? So it means any time you are looking for change in something, you have to know the whole concept of total differential, isn't it? Are you seeing that? How do we get the total differential? So this is how to determine the change. Having known how to determine the change, what about rates of change or rate of change of something, isn't it? When someone is telling you a rate of change in something, it is like that you with respect to time, isn't it? Just like a case of power, the rate of work that, isn't it? With respect to time, isn't it? So when you are not looking for the rate of change, hmm? I don't know what's wrong with my pen. When you are not looking for the rate, the rate of change, meaning it is with respect to time, isn't it? So we've seen that when you have Z, to be a function of x and y, then the total differential of that, you differentiate z partially with respect.
respect to x, then you remain with the dx. Then you differentiate z partially with respect to partially with respect to y, then you remain with the dy, isn't it? So, but now when we want the rate of change in something with respect to time, meaning we divide by dt to get it with respect to time, isn't it? So it means we divide all through by dt. By dt. If we divide all through by dt, so what do we have? dz over dt means rate of change in z, meaning with, res with respect to time. You see that? Then dx over dt now means rate of change in t. In, 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 in x, isn't it? Then dy over dt implies what? Rate of change in, in y. So from here you can now see this is now the rate of change in rate of change in, in z, isn't it? And this one is now the rate of change in rate of change in x with respect to time, isn't it? And this one is the rate of change in rate of change in rate of change in y with respect to time. Are you seeing that? So when somebody tells you that the, the volume of the volume of a cylinder is given by what? By r squared h, isn't it? If the radius, if the rate of change in radius is five second, uh, is five meters per second, that per means with respect to time, isn't it? If 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 the radius decreases, in fact, we say if the ra radius decreases at a rate of one meter per second, meaning decreases means uh, you put negative to show decreases, isn't it? At a rate of one meter per second, that per second means rate of something, isn't it? And the height increases at the rate of this per second, like that. So when it increases, positive. You see. So it means you find the rate of change in R and the rate of change. So when they are telling you to find the rate of change in volume, it's like you know that volume is a function of R and H because it is R and H are what are varying are the variables. Are you seeing? So it means here you get what is the total differential dv. You differentiate v partially with respect to r, then you remain with the dr, isn't it? Then plus, you differentiate v partially, partially, with respect to x, then you remain with the dh. So that when somebody tells you to get the rate of change in volume, meaning you divide everything by dt, you divide everything by dt to get the rate of change in something, isn't it? So the rate of change in volume, you will do this partial differentiation. Meaning, when you are differentiating partially with respect to r, only r is a variable, isn't it? Then you get that value from there because you will be told if the volume was, if, if the radius was initially this, height was initially this, things like that, isn't it? Then this one is the rate of change in the radius. You will be told whether it is decreasing so that you start with the negative or whether it is increasing so that it is positive or not, isn't it? So, this thing how to get the rate of change in something. But if they don't want the rate of change in volume, they want you to get the change in volume, meaning this d for rotary is what you substitute with the d for change, isn't it? So you think there are two different things you can get from this. You can get either the rate of change or the change. So if they don't need the rate of change in volume, they will need the rate of they will need the change in volume, isn't it? So change in volume where there is this d you now put the d for change, isn't it? So that you now have change in volume is partial v over partial r change in r plus partial v over partial s change in a height. Because this d is what we are substituting so that we get change in volume, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So you can either use this total differential to define a change in something or to define the rate of change in something. What is required is what you construct from it, isn't it? If they want the rate of change in volume, meaning you construct the rate of change from that total differential, isn't it? If they want the change in volume, meaning you construct the change in volume from that total differential. Are you seeing that? Good. So that is how to determine the rates of change and the change in something. So you cannot get the rate of change and the changes and the rates of change if you don't know the total differentiation or the total differential there, isn't it? So that is how to deal with such case.